I know how overwhelming it is trying to search for information on diabetes on the internet. Being told to eat healthier sounds so vague. Everywhere you look, there is conflicting information or people trying to sell you vitamins or supplements, and it can feel really hard to figure out what to do, what's true and what's not. Look no further because we are here to present you the hard facts, specifically when it comes to diabetes. My name is Charmaine and I'm the registered dietitian that helps people reverse type 2 diabetes. And my name is Galia. I'm a coach in the Reversing Diabetes program specializing in exercise. Today, we're going to talk about glucose tolerance and age. Glucose tolerance is defined as the ability to dispose of a glucose load and therefore glucose intolerance is defined as an impaired ability for glucose disposal. In other words, glucose tolerance describes the body's ability to process an amount of glucose. Glucose intolerance describes the body's inability to process an amount of glucose. Glucose tolerance has been observed to decrease with age. It is thought that this decline is not only a consequence of normal biological aging, but also due to secondary variables that disturb glucose metabolism, such as medication usage, increased obesity, changes in body fat distribution and physical inactivity, or in other words, loss of muscle mass. Taking a look at a study that aimed to explore the impact of age on glucose, the study looked at 742 men and women and divided that population into three age groups, young, middle and old, spanning from 17 years old up to 92 years old with at least 85 subjects in each of those age groups. Analyzing various factors in this study, they found a significant increase in the two-hour glucose levels across all age groups. After controlling for BMI, body fat percentage, waist to hip ratio, subscapular tricep skin fold ratio, which is basically if you pinch <laughs> the amount of tissue at the top of the back of your arm, um, physical activity level and fitness level, age-related differences in glucose tolerance between the young and the middle-aged subjects disappeared, but significant declines persisted in older individuals compared to the middle-aged or young subject. This shows us that age is a significant factor when examining glucose tolerance in older adults, but not as much when looking at glucose tolerance in the young and the middle age group. This is important because it allows us to focus on what factors we can control when it comes to mediating glucose tolerance across this large proportion of our lifespan, right? We're talking from 19, being 19 years old up to 92, right? Um, so focusing on lowering BMI, body fat percent, waist hip ratio and increasing physical activity we can actually work to improve our glucose tolerance in that young age to middle age kind of band width and category another study looked at 3,000 in participants with undiagnosed diabetes or pre-diabetes in 14 communities and all participants underwent a comprehensive examination including filling out a detailed questionnaire physical examination, a 75 grams of oral glucose tolerance test, and blood sample collection. The statistical analysis included 2,776 people, and in the study, the prevalence of diabetes and pre-diabetes were 15.1% and 52.3% respectively. The prevalence of diabetes and pre-diabetes is higher in the elderly than in the middle-aged group. Among the risk factors for diabetes, being overweight was associated with higher age. And some of the factors thought to influence glucose tolerance as we age are 1. Insulin resistance. With age, cells may become less responsive to insulin, leading to reduced glucose uptake from the bloodstream. This phenomenon, known as insulin resistance, can result in elevated blood glucose level and impaired glucose tolerance. The second thing is about beta cell function decline. The function of insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas may decline with age, and this decline can lead to inadequate insulin secretion in response to glucose intake. 
further counter to impaired glucose tolerance. And the third one includes increased adiposity. Aging is often associated with changes in body composition, including increased adiposity or fat accumulation, particularly around the abdomen. Excess adiposity, especially visceral fat, is closely linked to insulin resistance and impaired glucose metabolism. Another factor is reduced physical activity. So as individuals age, there may be a decline in physical activity levels due to various factors such as decreased mobility, muscle mass loss, or chronic health conditions. So reduced physical activity can worsen insulin resistance and impair glucose tolerance. We see that physical activity has a profound uh, effect on our insulin sensitivity levels. Even one you know, session of any kind of physical activity can actually improve your insulin sensitivity sensitivity for up to 48 hours and so if we are not particularly physically active that is something that's going to kind of effectively work against us the fifth factor is changes in hormone levels so naturally aging is accompanied by alterations in our hormone levels including growth hormone cortisol and adipokines which can influence glucose metabolism and also insulin sensitivity the last factor is going to be dietary habits. Changes in dietary habits and nutrient intake over our lifespan can impact glucose tolerance. Older adults may experience alterations in appetite, taste perception, and nutrient absorption, which can affect glucose regulation. These age-related changes collectively contribute to a decline in glucose tolerance and an increased risk of developing conditions such as impaired fasting glucose, impaired glucose tolerance, insulin resistance, and ultimately type 2 diabetes. Understanding these changes is crucial for developing targeted interventions to promote healthy aging and prevent metabolic disorders associated with impaired glucose metabolism. So we saw earlier from some of the studies that we mentioned that glucose tolerance is impacted as we age, but there are certain factors that are modifiable that we can control to improve our glucose tolerance. It's important to focus on those factors because because it allows us to take a proactive approach to managing our health as we inevitably age. So focusing on maintaining a healthy BMI, making sure that our BMI is also reflective of good muscle mass. BMI you know, looks at weight as a whole. It doesn't discriminate between where that weight is coming from. And so making sure that that BMI is reflective of being having right a healthy body composition so a healthy body fat percentage um keeping active as we age like i mentioned earlier you know any kind of bout of activity can improve our insulin sensitivity and therefore our glucose tolerance for up to 48 hours so it's a really profound and impactful tool that we can make use of and obviously the type of activity that we do might look different as we age but any activity is better than no activity right so starting with whatever you can that's something that we can all do and the last kind of you know factor to focus on is just continuing to focus on maintaining as healthy of dietary habits as we can um, particularly as we age and like we said our appetite changes, our taste perception changes, nutrient absorption changes, right? Making the best kind of choices that we can with what we can do is going to put us in a really strong position. I love that. Thanks for sharing. And all of it being said, shifting our pattern of eating as we age to a plant-based one can be extremely useful in making it easier to lose weight, reduce visceral adiposity, maintain a healthy BMI, and improve our glucose tolerance by improving our insulin sensitivity. A plant-based pattern of eating is one of the most established interventions for promoting overall health, particularly when it comes to weight loss and improving insulin sensitivity. All in all, eat your plants and let the rest take care of itself. If you like what you heard in this episode and can spare 60 seconds to give us a great review so that the podcast can reach more people, we'd really appreciate it as it can help us change many more lives.